Do you have questions about the much-anticipated survival game Nightingale? Hi, this is Christy, and I've got answers for you. I've scoured information all over the place and was able to get some insights from the devs as well to bring these deets to you. Here are some common and not so common questions answered for you. Character. Will there be leveling up and skill trees? There's no leveling mechanic in the game. Progression is based on the recipes, materials, and encounters that realm walkers discover. Will there be options for gear loadouts? It could potentially be done via using different character profiles. Are there skill builds? There's no specific skill tree. It's more in line with the items that you craft and upgrade and how you upgrade them, having an impact on your stamina, your health, your abilities. Will there be a role selection when creating your character? Example, farmer, hunter, explorer. Yes. You'll be able to select a character role during character creation along with many, many other things. But this gives you a narrative background mainly as well as a unique outfit choice for that type of character. They're still working on any gameplay implications of this. Can we have multiple characters? Yes, at the moment you can have three separate characters. You can only play with one at a time and they haven't decided yet whether this is gonna be the final number. Player inventory. Will you have limited inventory and will excess inventory slow you down? Yes, you do have limited inventory and there is an encumbrance system, but the inventory is quite generous. How much can you carry? You will initially be able to carry 75 pounds and have 75 inventory slots. This is not including slots for your two hot bars of five spaces each and separately seven spots for your gear. Will we be able to upgrade our backpack? Yes, you will be able to upgrade backpacks to carry more as well as some more advanced features. Survival systems. How far will characters mimic real life such as hunger and stamina? Will there be inertia in movements? When it comes to survival systems, they have hunger, health, stamina, and rest. And yes, movement will be inertia based so it has a natural feel to it. Can being hungry kill you? Yes, it is possible to starve to death. You can also die from being too tired. So keep an eye on the left bar around your health score that shows how hungry you are and on the yellow bar to the right side of your stamina that shows how rested or tired you are. How in-depth is the cooking system? They say they know cooking is something that players have a lot of fun with and they wanna deliver a very rich and varied set of recipes. All of these will restore hunger, all of these will restore stamina, but the bonuses are different because you use different ingredients. For example, meat tends to give more health, veggies tend to give more stamina. There are lots of different details and percentages that can be moved around in how you make these recipes too, especially as they get more complicated. And I'll be doing much more in-depth guides on this kind of system. How punishing is death in game? Where do you respawn? What do you drop? Is there a timer to recover? They say that right now they have a fairly standard death system where players lose their full inventory on death. However, I will note that you do not lose the things that are in your hot bar. So whatever weapons that you have in your hot bar, whatever food, whatever potions in either hot bar, those stay with you. And also, if you've put any backup items in the inventory of your NPC helper, those items do not disappear either even if your helper gets knocked down and you have to go revive them. There are no timers to get your inventory back. However, there is a death debuff after you die. And the faster that you go and get your inventory back, the faster that debuff will go away. It makes you a bit squishy. So you need to be a bit careful. When you do die, there is a death marker on the map and it shows up in your visual as well as how far away it is to help you get back to that grave. Also, any buffs that you had on you when you died will be removed. What happens when you die in a realm that's not your respite realm? Can you go back to that realm? When you die in a realm that's not your respite realm, you'll go back to a respite point. It will be somewhere in that realm. If you die in your own realm, then you respawn at your base. If you die in a realm that you are visiting and you need to go home to prepare yourself to go get your grave back, as long as you leave the portal open, you can go back in there after recovering yourself, after getting yourself ready, 
and go right back to find your grave again. NPCs. There are different kinds of NPCs in the game. What can NPCs do? The first NPC that you'll want to interact with in the game are traders. And the location of the trader when you spawn in will be marked on your map, so you'll know where to go to find them. Traders will sell you schematics for building as well as crafting schematics and different materials that you can buy for dust, which is the currency in the game. Can I hire an NPC to be my helper? Yes, it's actually a mission that you take on early in the game. How many helper NPCs can you have? Currently, one, but it is a goal to have a host of helpers as the game continues developing. Can we give our helpers instructions? The NPCs can use most of the tools, so axes for chopping trees, pickaxes for mining stones. They can also use those as weapons to help you fight, but you're not specifically telling them go do this. It's just more like what you equip. When you go in and look in their inventory, you can equip the ax or equip the pickaxe. And whichever they have equipped is what they're going to do. You can dress them. You can upgrade, upgrade their gear. Like I said, eventually they want to have a lot of NPCs available to you in your state. They really, in your estate, they really want to make it feel like it's alive. Will we be able to interact with all of the factions in the game? Will it have any game plat? gameplay impact or is it just lore? So they say most Fey and humans organize themselves into factions and there will be more introduced to you over the course of your realm walking adventures. All factions, whether Fey or human, can provide opportunities for lore and storytelling. Part of the mystery though is to uncover who is a friend and who is a foe in the realms and who can help you play the way you'd like to. Building. Is there going to be a building limiter? Yes. There is a limit on how many build pieces you can have in a realm. I don't have the exact number on what that is yet, but I've requested that information and someone's supposed to be getting back to me, so I will get that information to you when I have it. However, they did say that during the playtesting, no one hit the build limit, so it's pretty big. Is there free rotation? No, there is not complete free rotation right now. The rotation is less than 45 degrees. Will the building system be placed from inventory like ARC or blueprints like in the forest or grounded? It's more similar to the forest and grounded. You place down a blueprint or a schematic for parts of the structure such as a wall or staircase and then you complete the structure by filling the blueprint out with the required resources. You can walk up to the outline, the schematic, and you can choose to fill it in, and your helper who is gathering materials for you will help build it out for you as well. So if you're building a structure out of wood, you may want to have your helper chopping wood, and then you put down a schematic, you go to chop wood. When you come back, it's already built because they put the resources in. Will we be able to build more than one home base on any given realm? Currently, you only have one respite point at a time, which is built with your cairn, kind of like your main home base but you can build multiple structures anywhere in the realms. You don't have to put down a different cairn everywhere that you wanna build. You have one in the realm, that's it, you can build. Can we combine different building tile sets? Yes, you can mix and match from any of the tile sets that you have. So you could use a crude foundation floor, connect it to a desert wall, connect it to shack pieces. You have total freedom in that. Everything connects together. Will we be able to build structures in odd places? Anywhere in the realm. There are some structure placement rules of places that you can't put things, such as on sharp incline angles, or if there are objects in the world, blocking placement. But then also certain pieces can be added to things that are in the world, like you can attach a staircase onto tall buildings or to reach something up high on a POI. Um, but otherwise, you can place things pretty much anywhere, just depending on the landscape and the natural features allowing it. And they are continuing to work on ensuring that performance is maintained, even with very complex player-built structures. Because let's face it, they're gonna be big, and they're gonna have to be big as well in order to incorporate all the build pieces, all the crafting items that you're gonna be using. Can we edit existing structures or only build around them? Yes, you can edit structures that you have built. 
already. When you destroy pieces that have already been fully built and put in place, then you get part of those resources back. And they can be picked up by you or by any members of your party. Our building set's going to be free. All the building sets that they've shown us are included in the game. No additional purchase necessary. Will there be an option with building to allow free placement or clipping? Yes, is what we're told. So initially they had said no, but then during testing there was um, some kind of bug or something that happened and things started clipping through each other and the players liked it. And so they say they've left this in. I haven't seen this piece in action yet. And so I'm curious to test this out. Will building parts come crashing down when destroyed, possibly by you or enemies? Buildings will crumble if the foundations are destroyed. Currently, they do not cause damage to players or NPCs. And they say they did this mostly to prevent griefing. Where there be discrete tiers of building materials and items. So they say there's two factors with building pieces. There's your starting set and then there's tile sets that you unlock later. Actually, there's two starting sets. One with wood and one with stone. The crude building pieces. But as you progress along, the sets that you unlock later are stronger than the earlier sets. Because of the resources that you use to create them which also provides variability to them. Will there be a range of furniture? Yes. There's a variety of things that you can build in your state, like chairs, beds, tables, lights, workbenches, but most of them have a gameplay purpose for being there, like getting new recipes, upgrades, status effects, that kind of thing. Items that are specifically for decor is something that they're interested in doing. They don't have a huge amount of them in the game right now. It's not the highest priority at the moment. Multiplayer. Can we play with friends that are at different levels? Yes. You'll be able to invite your friends into your game world and vice versa anytime that you want, regardless of your progress. They encourage you to play with friends. Will the game support crossplay? Right now, you can play with friends between Steam and with Epic. They don't have cross progression though. So if you have a game on Steam with a character, you won't be able to say, play with that same character profile on Epic. As for other platforms, consoles and such, they haven't crossed that bridge yet. Right now, they're focusing on the PC. How do I party up with my friends? There's an in-game system where you can find your friends and send invites back and forth. They can come to your world. You can go to their world. You can have a max of six people in a realm at a time right now in a group. A part of your group can go to another realm. A part can stay where you are. What happens when only a part of my group goes to a new realm? So you can choose whether to go to the other realm with your friends and have your party split up. However, even if you're split up into separate realms, say there's three over here and three over there, if you want more people to come in, then they have to be given a party invite and there has to be room in the group. And when they come in, when they accept the invite, they can choose who in the party they want to be teleported to when they spawn in. Can we complete the storyline together? So players play together, but each player is responsible for their own game progression throughout the storyline. So it's not like in Shrouded where once something happens in that world, it's done for the world. Everyone individually has their own storyline that they're progressing through. Is there a limit on how many players can have a certain realm as their respite realm. So currently there is a limit on how big a party can size, a party size can be, and so that's how many occupants can be in the realm. So if you invite a friend to your realm, they leave your party, you don't kick them, and then you both make parties larger than the allotted realm amount, somebody will have to leave the realm so that others can join. And they say they're still working on this, so we'll see how that pans out. Can, can friends visit my realm when I'm not there? Yes, if you let them. So one of the things you'll be able to craft is a personal realm card, like an address card or calling card. And if you give this to a trusted friend, I would say give it to a trusted friend, <laughs> they can play in your world when you're not there. Are there open realms? Yes. You can choose to go to an open realm that has other random players in it and interact with people there. But the people in the open realm, the public realm, can't go back to your world without being invited. What is the watch? The watch is pretty exciting. At a certain point in the progression, you're going to get to where 
to a place where you go to the watch. It's a community get together place, a place to show off and interact with other people. It's a pinch point, so everyone goes through it eventually. And once you make it to the watch, you will be able to meet new NPCs, visit new shops, buy new schematics and items. You can get lore. There are vaults there that you can take on. It's kind of like the anomaly in No Man's Sky, except it seems from the description of it more involved. And there's a max of 30 players that can be there at once. So if you want to go meet your friends there, you need to party at first. Servers. Do we need to rent or run a server to play with our friends? No. They're hosting the servers for everyone so that it's seamless and they can have all the worlds visible and you can stay on them whenever you want to or like go to a friend's realm when they're not there. So they said they want to cover the server for us and they also need the cloud-based approach to be able to have the realms and portals work the way that they want it to. They call it a million realms, one universe. Will characters be tied to a specific game or server? No. Players can have multiple characters, three currently, and any one of those can join and play any other realm once they're invited. Will other players be able to continue playing in your realm if you leave? Yes. Since the world's save data is hosted in the cloud, the world will continue to be there. So if someone hosted the party and is hosting the realm, but they have to leave, the other players can continue to play in that realm even if the host disconnects but they won't be able to spin it up themselves unless they've been given an address card. How can we know if we're close to a server for connection speed? They're currently using Google servers, so there will be servers everywhere that there are Google servers. Realms, how many realm cards will there be? Currently, there are three biome cards, forest, swamp, and desert. There are 40 major cards, which determine major things about the type of the realm that you wanna go into and 50 minor cards, which allow you to change things in the world once you're there even. Change things like how gravity works or, or how easy hunting is. And they, con and they plan on continuing to add these. There's like no end to how many they could be. And they're taking suggestions from players. And so it, it could become massive. There's no limit. How many realms can we keep active at once? Players can build as many portals as they want as long as they haven't hit the realm's building limit. They can each be connected to a unique realm and as long as you don't close it, it'll stay open. But realms will go on standby after a little while if there's no players in them. You can still go back to that open realm. It just takes a little bit longer for it to load. How can how long can the world created by these cards last? So respite realms will always exist and you can always return to them. If you adventure to a realm and you don't make it your respite realm, it will be available as long as the portal is open. If you close the portal and no player is in the realm, it'll close on the server side after 10 minutes and then you can't go back to it. If you close the portal and a player is still there, then the realm won't close until 10 minutes after that person has left and then it's gone. Will the difficulty of the game keep increasing? Each realm has a realm power number that's associated with it. So the higher the number, the more dangerous and challenging it is. You'll get different encounter types, new enemies, they'll do more damage, they have more health. There are different ways that you can increase or decrease the difficulty of, realm, of the realm, such as different cards that you can play when you create the realm of what level of difficulty realm it's gonna be, such as an abeyance realm, which is lower level. And then you can also play minor cards on it to make it harder or less hard in different specific areas. Will there be an option for a truly peaceful realm? There are different ways that you can make your realm more peaceful. For example, when you create a realm, you can choose whether it's gonna be low, middle, or high level. And then once you're in the realm, you can play minor cards on that realm that can increase or decrease the level of aggression of the mobs. So like one of the realm cards that you can use is to look for a home realm that would be more peaceful. Will there be multi-biome realms? Not currently. Currently, each specific realm has a specific biome. Will there be mostly water realms? Not currently, no. But there are plenty of lakes and rivers and ocean. You can go swimming. Maps are currently 2 by 2 kilometers. Will some realms be larger? Nope. That's the standard map size. 
and they don't anticipate changing that anytime soon. They're more focused on creating variety within the realms and different sizes right now. Portals. What will the portal system be like? So to activate a portal, you need realm cards. Realm cards are crafted from resources that you find in the environment and they act like modifiers to the different realm that you'll travel to, affecting environment, weather, wildlife, enemies. You can also find realm cards in the world, like in chests and such. To open a portal, you place in two realm cards, the biome card and the major card, and then you activate the portal. It takes a few seconds for the magic to happen and the portal to load, and then you go through. Can I build my own portal? Yes, but you have to be more advanced in the game to be able to get to that point. Can I leave a portal open to my favorite realm other than my home realm? Yes, you can. As long as it stays open, it'll be there. How many portals can you have? There's no limit on how many portals you can have as long as you don't hit the build limit for the realm. Are there any special portal cards or realm cards? There will be. There will be some special cards coming, like some limited time special card happening, but we don't have any of the details on that yet. Combat. What will base defense look like? Currently, you can set up barricades or structures, walls to keep out the bound and other creatures. But creatures aren't like actively raiding your buildings, trying to tear them down, like in Valheim. They will, however, come into your area if it's near a place that they spawn and attack you. When you put down your cairn for your respite spot, that deters creatures from spawning there. And then, of course, there's also some places that are more or less dangerous of where you could place your base. What does an attack on your base look like? Currently, if you're in a secure area, like not close to enemy bases and spawn points, then the only time they're going to come and attack you is at night because they're trying to remove all humans from the Fey realms. But if you build your base in a secure enough spot, they may never come near your base at all. If you're building out just anywhere in the world or near moms and they're attacking and you're killed or you leave the realm while they're attacking the base and they will dismantle nearby structures because they're trying to get rid of human influence. Are there bosses that require a group to beat or can a solo player beat them? So the intention now is that solo players will be able to play the entire game by themselves, but it will be a challenge to do. The boss fights, the boss is at the health and the level that the boss is at. It doesn't scale for how many people are there. So if a boss has, say, a hundred level health and it takes three people half an hour to take it down, when you're the only one fighting it, it's still going to have a hundred level health. So it's going to be more of a challenge to do it that way. But it should be doable, especially with preparation. Is there scaling difficulty? The scaling difficulty happens as you progress through the realms. Creatures get harder as you progress. The realms don't scale their difficulty based on how many people are there or the moms don't. So if you're looking for a tougher experience, try doing things solo or use realm cards and settings to increase the difficulty. Can players be revived when dying? Yes, there's a short period where a player is downed, but they can be revived by another player, and they can also be revived by their NPC. Tools and weapons. What kinds of tools and weapons are there? So currently they have the axe, the axe pick, which is like a pickaxe, a hunting knife, a maul, a sling bow, which is like your initial ranged weapon that you use, shooting rock pellets at people, at people, well, at mobs, a pistol, a shotgun, a rifle, and they're going to be looking at having different versions of these, and additional modifications for them. And of course, then you can get into a lot of the customization and crafting as well, and what magic you apply to different things when you create it. Will there be a way to display or to continue to upgrade items? There's currently not a way to display weapons and such in the game. As far as upgrading it, it would be more about making a new one with different materials that give it higher qualities and higher stats. Magic. What type of magic will there be in the game? So in the world of Nightingale, humans themselves don't have innate magical abilities. So they have to use spells and charms. And these are tied to a weapon or a tool or infused in gear. So different types of spells and different kinds of charms can be applied depending on what kind of magic you want to use. Whether it's an attack spell, like throwing a swarm of bees at something, or a healing spell. How many spells will there be? 
I don't think they entirely know how many spells there will be, but they're planning on trying to continue adding a lot of variety. They're adding a lot of variety in everything, so it makes sense they would in this area too. We're probably looking at something like about 10 at early access. They consider it magic to be a major part of the realm walker fantasy. So there'll be utility spells, combat spells, all different kinds, and this is another part that will keep growing over early access. Miscellaneous. So many random questions I didn't know where to put, so here's the randomness. Will we be able to have pets or mounts? So to clarify, pets and mounts are two different things in the game. Pets have been prototyped, but I don't think they're actually in production yet. But they would like to get pets ready during early access. Mounts, they haven't looked at significantly. So that will be a little bit further down the road, if it happens. Where there'll be, will there be different options for difficulty? Yes, when you start your game up, you can choose easy, normal, difficult, as well as using cards to change things in your realm. Will there be a dismantling system for crafted items in the game? Yes, you can dismantle build structures and building, but also things that you craft, you can destroy by converting them into dust, which can be used as money. Pretty much most everything, if you can hold it in your inventory, can be converted into dust. Will resources remotely pull from storage when crafting? This will not currently be in the game at the launch of early access, but I have more to tell you about this in a video coming soon. Is there fishing? Yes. And you can access fishing pretty early on. How do I play in third person? There's settings that you can set in the menu, or if you're in game and you wanna switch between first and third person, hit F5. Do trees regrow? No. However, there is magic in the game eventually to help you regrow trees if you've left a stump. And NPCs do not chop down the stumps of trees. Apparently there's also a creature that can help regrow trees. How long is one day night cycle? That depends on the type of rum cards because you could set it to always night or always day, but in general, it's around 60 minutes. Do environmental resources respawn? Most resources don't respawn naturally. The way to get more resources is to go to another realm and things like chests that you've found and gotten the loot out of, those don't respawn. However, the mobs will respawn. Are there ways to find rare or challenging discoveries? Absolutely. Part of the goal of the game is to reward you for exploring and taking on tougher challenges. Will there be gardening? They're developing a system for this, but we don't know if it's 100% implemented yet. Will we be able to label storage containers? Yes. You can also label your cairn and give your home a name. Will there be carts to move around large amounts of resources? They don't have any plans for this at early access, but it's something that has been asked for by the playtesters, and so they're going to consider it as the game goes on. But I will give you a little tip to remember, it's not exactly the same as having a cart, but your NPC can carry things for you. Just saying. How will future content updates work? So they're patterning their update content after Valheim and No Man's Sky. They want to continue providing for the players and providing the community with the things that they want as much as they can as they develop, and they have no plans to charge for updates. The CEO, Aaron, said he's really wanting to serve the player experience, and I really got that feel from him. Will the game have a beginning, middle, and end? So you have an overall goal of reaching Nightingale City, but their intention is to continue updating and expanding the game. Currently, in the early access version, you won't be able to reach Nightingale City. That's future development that'll be dropping. They do want players to feel like there's a lot to do in the realms to keep them busy beyond just completing the main quest line. Will there be a roadmap for development? I'm gonna say no. Aaron has talked about how roadmaps create stress for development teams and they limit creativity. So he says they'll talk about goals, but they don't want the pressure of a roadmap. And also they wanna see what players want. There's a lot of things that came up during play testing and during the recent stress test as well um, that players said, hey, we really need this here. And so they're looking at adding that in. And of course, things like that wouldn't be in a roadmap and can delay roadmaps, and then it's just a bunch of fuss and muss. So the approach they're taking is they're going to continue communicating, they're going to continue interacting with the community, but they're not going to try and set strict 
rules on their developers of when they have to have certain things done. I have some super exciting videos coming out about Nightingale very soon, including news and detailed guides. It was super fun to get a little peek into the game. If you have more questions, and I know you do, type them below and I'll do my best to find all the answers. If you found this info useful, please take half a sec and leave a like as it really does help the channel grow and consider subscribing for more Nightingale. Happy gaming!